Once again, I am rehabilitating my addiction to bad toys with one of my favorites. And no, it's not this one. However, it is related. Behold, SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Double, Cyclone Joker form. Your default form for the main henshin hero. Now, just like any Figure Arts, the detailing on this thing is incredible. Just about every detail from the toy is accurately recreated here. And just to point out some of my favorites, uh, of course, the compound eyes, they must be mentioned. They look great on him, too. Very clear, very, very well done. And uh, just to... Uh, just to get a few of the misconceptions about all the versions of this toy out of the way, uh, no, these are not going to be repaints for all nine forms. Uh, there's a little bit of molding here on the chest to accurately recreate the stripe pattern. You can see a little indents here on the cyclone half and some uh, runes or uh, I don't know what I don't know what you'd call these. It's some strange pattern on the Joker side, but that's all molded detail. So you're not going to uh, you're, there is a little bit of molding going on, they're just not all repaints or anything like that. And the belt I'll mention as well. Really, really well done, accurate to the toy, as you can see. Uh, even down to the lights inside, you can see one half green, one half purple. So that was recreated quite well. You can get the maximum drive slot over here. I'd also like to point out some of the amazing detailing here on the wrist guards as well as on the ankle guards. The pattern from the chest is carried over down to these points, little runes over here, and your plain simple indents on this side. So, I don't know, it's uh, quite the contrast between the two sides in uh, design-wise. Also like to quickly mention the colors on this thing. This is such a gorgeous metallic emerald in person. I'm not sure if the camera is correctly getting it, but it is a beautiful shade of green. It's absolutely vibrant and re really shining. Very well done. Uh, the black side is a little bit duller in comparison, but there's really no avoiding that, and it's still show accurate, so there's no real use complaining about it, I guess. Now, articulation-wise, it's got all of the points of articulation you come to expect from figure arts. This internal ball socket in the chest, which gives it so much more natural movement and range. Your double jointed elbows, triple jointed wrists. You've got the torso joint, your, which is a little bit limited on him. I've seen better, but it's not a big gripe. Uh, all my favorites are here, like the quadruple jointed feet which is always more helpful than you'd think it would be. The double jointed neck down at the base and inside the head. Oh, and I would be amiss to not mention the return of the Kabuto leg stems. You can get much, much more dynamic poses out of these than you can the normal joints that uh, unfortunately appeared a lot lately. My uh, my Agito and my Ixa had these uh, normal ball joints in there, so I was glad to see that uh, Kamen Rider Double was bringing those back, and they work a little bit better than they did on the Kabuto figures. That was quite a surprise as well. You know, I should also probably mention the head crest on this thing. Uh, thankfully, much smaller than it was. If anyone saw the original artwork, uh, this thing was laughably huge. So, be glad it got shrunken down, and it's quite accurate now. Speaking of, you got one last detail in the... Well, I guess this would be point of articulation number 37. So, apparently I miscounted a little bit. Uh, you get your scarf accessory here. It's fairly basic. And it's ball-jointed onto, onto his neck, so you can move it pretty much any direction you want. There isn't much uh, lateral movement, but you shouldn't really need it for this particular scarf. I'll explain that in a second. But overall, there's some incredible
incredible things going on in this deco. However, uh, there is one minor gripe and one legitimate complaint. The minor gripe is back to the belt shot, which, if you notice, uh, they put in enough detail to get the Cyclone Joker lights, but both of the Cyclone Joke and the Joker memories are completely black. Now, that's not a big deal on the Joker memory, but the Cyclone it really does kind of throw me off. I mean, I can, t I can tell one's in there, but it really needed to be green. And considering they could paint such a small detail like the lights, or if you can even see it on here, I doubt, but the, that little gem inside his forehead crest, even that got a little bit of paint. And those are smaller details than that memory. And it's so prominent in the show, I just couldn't understand why they would leave both of them black. The legitimate concern is the same one that most people have looking at this figure. That is the right elbow joint, which as you can see is not green, and that is a major inaccuracy to the actual character design. Uh, this stuff is made out of a different type of plastic. It's completely unpaintable, but in exchange, it's far more durable. It'll last a long, long time and stand up to the heavy friction of a joint. You can see the back of his knee is made up of the same stuff. Pretty much any heavy friction joint, a lot of Transformers have it too. This unpaintable plastic. However, uh, it apparently can't be molded in these colors too. I know some of the early production photos for the toy did actually have a green joint for a while, but apparently just wasn't uh, wasn't feasible to keep it on. I assume it doesn't do as well as the black. But uh, it's distracting, but it's not a total turnoff. Everything else on this toy is phenomenal. As you can see, these are attached, so they will move right along with the shoulder. It looks a little weird, though, so try to keep it like that. It does turn the bicep as well. You've got a ton of posing options, which I'll show off later. And uh, then comes the accessory options. And for this character, there's really only one way for him to accessorize. Wait, wait, wait a minute, that's, that's not how the metal memory works, you're just... <sighs> Never mind. As we can see here, you've got plenty of accessories for this figure art. In particular, eight hands all together, including the default fists, which is a given for any figure art. You also have the usual splayed open hands, though they aren't exactly as rage-induced as open hands normally are. You also have these... Uh, somewhat splayed hands with a extended index finger. That's kind of useful for uh, belt poses and anything that would involve memories for and I don't know, you've got your occasional martial arts pose it work for too. And the given the counting up your crimes fingers. Which I always love this double finger pointing that he does. Very stylish gesture. So you can do it on either side this way. So, eight hands all together, which is a good number for a figure art. Now, no holding things hands, because, of course, Cyclone Joker needs no weapons. His fists are his weapons. So, in lieu of that, you get an extra muffler. Now, this one is uh, kind of the opposite of this one. While this one's meant to lay over the shoulder blade, this one is meant to stick straight outward. Uh, it's on a ball joint, just like the hands, so it pops on, pop off. Uh, it's soft plastic, though, so I'd be a little bit more careful with it than the normal hands. Or, But, you know, it's effective. It makes it, it, uh, it really looks like it's coming off in the wind very well. So, it's a nice little accessory set for one of these. Especially considering some other releases that uh, had just as much going on and kind of got gypped out of the accessory count. So, it really did work out well. He's got everything he needs, and if you really need more than that, well, wait for all the others to come out. Oh, but now I guess uh, with accessories out of the way, it's time to finish this review off. And for double, there's only one way to finish things. A little posing porn, yes?
So once again, SH Figure Arts does not disappoint, and to this day, still one of the most solid and consistent action figure lines I've ever collected. I'm not saying that lightly either. They really are that phenomenal. So one more figure art down. However, much like fellow figure art reviewer Vangelis, I'm starting to get quite an excessive number of these guys that I have yet to review. Now, I've got a lot of ways I could do it, but considering there are so many of these guys coming in, I think the only appropriate way is a good old-fashioned Rider War. The best place for toys on the net? BigBadToyStore.com Pre-orders for all the hottest toys. The biggest brands. Imports of your favorites. Vintage toys available again. Collectible replicas and statues. Pile of loot. Buy some now, some later, and get it shipped all at once. It's all there right now at BigBadToyStore.com I just want to quickly point out that once again for this release we got another strange colored box instead of the normal silver that usually comes for figure arts. And I finally figured out the pattern. Current series not only have common stamped on them instead of Master Rider, but they also seem to be in these uh, more wild character matching color schemes that are made to make them stand out. So you kind of have a subline of current series characters amongst all of the older riders that Figure Arts is normally uh, accustomed to. I really only figured it out because my Ixa box is still the traditional silver. Uh, you don't need to know that, it's pointless. <laughs>